Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for returning. You know, when when diagnosed with conditions like cancer or maybe hypertension, standard practice is for patients to learn their prognosis and receive a treatment plan. Now, this is all based on a staging system, which looks at how far the disease has progressed. Now, notably missing from this list of conditions is CAD, coronary artery disease. It's strange because it's the number one cause of death here in the United States. Well, in this episode, we're going to be speaking with returning guest, Dr. James Min. He's CEO and founder of Clearly. Now, Clearly is the company that's creating a new standard of precision heart care. He's returning to talk about a brand new paper that was published that proposes a four-stage system for the disease burden of plaque, which is the direct cause of CAD, and what that means for the future of disease treatment. Welcome back, James. How have you been? Oh, great, great. Neil, thanks so much for having me back. I'm glad that you could come back. For our listeners that aren't familiar with you as a contributor, give us a brief look into your professional background, and then let's talk about your new study. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I'm Jim Min. I'm a cardiologist by training. Did most of my training in the Midwest at the University of Chicago and then headed to New York City in 2005 um, and spent about 15 years at Cornell Medical College in New York Presbyterian on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Um, I left that job about two, two and a half years ago to pursue our company full time, which, to be honest, was just a very natural extension of what we were doing in terms of cardiovascular disease prevention uh, when we had our, our heart health program at Cornell. So it's a pleasure to be here. I look forward to talking to you about the staging system. First of all, I did mention that a staging system looked at how far a disease has progressed. Go into a little bit more detail about what a staging system is and do all diseases have a, a staging system or, or certain diseases? Yeah, pretty much all of the diseases that you can think of, right? Like if you think about cancer or you think about asthma or you think about retinopathy, um, you think about arthritis. Um, I mean, they're all sort of staged. And the reason that we stage them is that we can then better standardize um, our approach to understanding how sick somebody is. And so if you had a cancer that was a stage zero, that means obviously you don't have any cancer. But if you have, you know, a certain stage where it starts to metastasize and becomes very severe, like then you obviously have a much higher stage. And yeah, as you pointed out in your introduction, ironically, we've never had a staging system for you know, the most common cause of death, which is atherosclerosis, as it, and in particular as it relates to, uh, to heart attacks, uh, the number one killer in the world. How is that possible? You know, we just never had tools to be able to do that. If you think about the way we stage like breast cancer or stage colon cancer, we've got uh, we're armed with uh, great uh, imaging tools, right? Mm-hmm. So things like 3D mammography or digital breast tomosynthesis, colonoscopies, and things like that. Um, we we have never had the ability until very recently to be able to do whole heart phenotyping. And by phenotyping, I mean to look at the amount of um, of plaque or atherosclerosis buildup in a in a patient's heart um, across the entire coronary vascular tree because we have many many vessels in our, our in our heart arteries and um, we've just never had a, an ability to do that and and moreover never had an ability to do that non-invasively tell us a bit about this paper that was recently published in the journal of cardiovascular computer tomography earlier this year yeah um, so the nidus of this was really that like um, clearly has developed um, a whole heart disease phenotyping solution that can now uh, fully evaluate all of the heart disease and its characteristics and its um, burden um, within a matter of minutes. And so we felt like, you know what, now we've got this very safe, non-invasive and accurate tool that allows us to do this whole heart phenotyping. So, but we don't know actually like what that means. We don't know, you know, when some, when we get this from the patients quite a bit where they say, oh, okay, you tell me I have a hundred units of plaque. Is that a lot? It turns out we don't know because we've never actually measured heart disease on a whole heart level. And so the idea around this was to really try to take metrics that people were familiar with traditionally in cardiology and to relate that to actual disease burden, like the amount of atherosclerosis buildup that typically builds up in the walls of our arteries very silently over time and places us at heightened risk of having a heart attack. And we wanted to just create these categories so we could help frame for the physicians, like the primary care physicians and the general cardiologists, like, 
you know, um, what is none, what is a little, what is some, and what is a lot. And so that was sort of the rationale behind the staging system. With having had such difficulty in developing tools in the past, would you say that you're discovering that every patient is, is different? What is bad for one patient is not that bad for another patient as far as plaque buildup? Or is that even possible? Is plaque buildup simply plaque buildup? And if you've got, say, a 100 it's bad no matter what your history is, your family history, or your health? Yeah, actually, that's a really great point, Neil. Like, um, you know, this takes me back to sort of my Cornell days where we were developing a series of prediction algorithms, clinical predictive analytics that would allow us to identify who would be at risk of a heart attack or who would be at risk of being a rapid progressor of disease or who would be at risk of reduced blood supply in the heart arteries. And we developed a series of algorithms and we, we took those algorithms and we rank ordered all of the features like that, that predicted those adverse patient centric outcomes. And, you know, we utilized our uh, ability to, to apply, um, image analysis to non-invasive CT scans in order to really quantify and characterize the type of disease. When we rank ordered all of the things that were most important to the algorithm to identify patients who are sicker versus patients who are not, what we were surprised to see is that none of the traditional factors that we thought were that important, that we thought were important, were actually that important. So, for example, like the top 10 features were all related to the disease, to the atherosclerosis buildup and the type of disease, the amount of disease, the location of disease. But what was noticeably absent from those lists were age, gender, race, diabetes, status, and so on. So what we recognized was that by personalizing care, sort of going to an N of one care, where you really focus on that patient as an individual rather than, you know, as sort of a population-based norm, that we could democratize the care, right? Mm -hmm. Because it no longer cared if you were black or white or a woman or a man. And so I think that the most potent way that you could truly provide and deliver precision heart care is to personalize it. Mm -hmm. And the best way to personalize it is with these success stories that we've had with other staging systems uh, where you start to look at the individual as one and really personalize the treatment and evaluation. So how do you think this is going to affect cardiovascular care as a whole once it's uh, finalized and fine-tuned? Yeah, it's a really great question. Like the, you know, if you think about it, the way I look at coronary artery disease, um, as you mentioned, is sort of in three sequential steps, right? The primary disease process is the plaque or the atherosclerosis buildup that's within the, the walls of the heart arteries, that is typically very silent. I mean, the typical presentation of somebody who will suffer a heart attack or die from one is that they don't have any symptoms, and then the next day they're dead. Um, and we all know somebody like that, right? Somebody who went out for a run and never came back, or somebody who went to sleep and never woke up because they represent the majority of people who will have heart attacks. So, but as a field of cardiology, we've been very symptom driven, right? We were, we're provoked and we, we look at things um, from the patients who have symptoms. So as you think about how does atherosclerosis precipitate symptoms? Well, the way it does it is it starts to grow and then sometimes it can encroach in upon the lumen of the vessel, which is where the blood is flowing. And sometimes that encroachment can cause a narrowing. That's called a stenosis. A narrowing or a stenosis um, is simply a secondary anatomic consequence of the actual disease process, which is the atherosclerosis. At some point, maybe that narrowing becomes too high and starts to limit the blood supply into the through the heart arteries, which typically and can, which can cause like symptoms of chest pain or shortness of breath. And that's a a, um, a um, definition of a word called ischemia or reduced blood flow throughout the heart arteries into the muscle. But that's simply a tertiary physiologic consequence of, of atherosclerosis on the lumen and resulting in a reduction in blood supply. Historically, what we've done is we've waited for people to have symptoms, which is a very late stage of disease typically. And then we will look for ischemia, the, the third thing. And then that, that ischemia that we look at is through a stress test. And that's simply an indirect measure of what who has a stenosis or a narrowing, which is that second um, part of that process that I talked about. And then what we'll do is we'll treat that stenosis, but what we never did as um, a field is actually measure the atherosclerosis. So if you think about that very simply, um, for the last 50 to 60 years, like heart doctors have not actually measured heart disease. We're very, very good at looking at indirect markers of heart disease and downstream sequela of heart disease, such as stenosis or ischemia, 
but we've never looked at the disease itself. So if you think about sort of the absurdity of that, it's like a breast cancer doctor who says, I'm going to take care of a woman with breast cancer without ever looking at the breast cancer. Well, that's just nobody would buy that as an, as an acceptable approach. No. And now that we are armed with non-invasive tools that can do whole heart disease phenotyping, I think it's time for a better way where heart doctors actually start to measure heart disease and use that as the primary emphasis for treatment rather than these indirect surrogate markers. James, would you give us a website where we can learn more? Sure. Like our website is clearlyhealth.com. Uh, clearly is spelled with two E's, so www.clearlyhealth.com. And some of the information related to the staging system can be seen there. It was also an article that was published in the peer-reviewed science um, in the Journal of Cardiovascular Computed Tomography. So staging of atherosclerosis, if you put that into Google, along with the JC. CT, which is the Journal of Cardiovascular Computed Tomography, then they can find information there as well. James, always a pleasure. I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Always some great information. Thank you for returning tonight. All right. Thanks so much, Neil. It's a pleasure to be here. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest, Dr. James Min. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.